television. Uh, here's a man who's recorded 21 albums with the band Kiss, has sold 70 million records. And you would think that a guy like that would want to slow down a little bit after 15 years of being at the top of uh, rock and roll. Uh, but he doesn't. And here's what he has to say about people who do. Anybody that sits on top of his palace after you've worked you know, all your life to get it and says, you know, it's lonely at the top, it's just miserable, it's just, they're full of it. It's the best. All right, here he is, Jim Sim Gene Simmons. <laughs> Great band. Everybody should know that. that is Isn't that a nice band? band? We are uh, we're very happy to have you because I know you don't uh, appear on television very much. That's true. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I, I just think uh, the size of it bothers me. I mean, mm -hmm. if you guys were doing a TV show and it was in a movie theater, that's a little bit different. Yeah. Because then I could fit. Because <laughs> <laughs> you like it big, don't you? I, I do. Everything should be big. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you really shouldn't settle for anything. Mm -hmm. Everything should be too much food and too much good times and too many pretty girls. Mm. You know what that's like. Ah, okay. Now, I want to know about this, the, the quote that we had uh, of you, people who, who kind of sit on their duffs when they get to the top. Uh, you aren't like that. Now, are you a driven man, do you think? I think uh, there's probably something wrong with every entertainer that gets up on stage. There's probably a loose screw someplace in me. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it's really important for everybody to follow their dreams. Mine, mine are really not limited to small stuff. I don't just want to stand on a street corner with a raincoat and say, hey, lady, look, <laughs> that's not enough. Uh, you know, there's just no thrill like getting up in front of an audience and having them love you and then wanting all the beautiful women you know, it's oh, the, see, the same I, stuff that you got. Well, no, uh -oh. see, that, that here you're bringing up beautiful women. You know, Gene, in again. you have, well, you're legendary. Legendary in that uh, there is this rumor going around that Gene Simmons has been with 3,000 women. You're going to believe all that stuff. Well, that's, that's what I want to know. Is that true? Uh, because even if it's half true, <laughs> if it's half true, we, we want to make a statue. See, the truth is... <laughs> of, uh, of what? About 3,000 <laughs> women. That's, yeah, well, it'll be up to Ron. No, no, Ron. No, yeah. the, uh, the truth is that a long time ago, 15 years ago, we've been touring and recording for 15 years, and a long time ago I decided instead of uh, banging my head against the wall at night, I'd do something constructive. So I took up photography, and, you know, the indoor sport variety. Oh. I don't do any outdoor sports, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. No, he, his wall. So, uh, <laughs> so you're picking. Will you stop with this? He's making this whole thing up. Now oh. I'm going to... I want to, you've got, a, now you have photos, you have... Uh, well, I mean, that was, that was my way of keeping sane. I think uh, everybody's got to channel all that, you know, energy and... Well, you're talking about, about <clears throat> photos of, of women? women? Oh, yes. You know, oh. Friends, oh. preferably instead of enemies. And I think, uh, you know, at some point, none of us are going to be, none of, none of us are going to stay young, whatever. At some point, all this stuff is going to disappear. And I want to be able to look back and say, yeah, that's where I was in 1974, and that's where I was in 75. Ah, and, ah. and that's why. But you open yourself up, I would think, uh, for some really bizarre uh, incident. Do you, or does anything stick out in your mind of, of, uh, of a groupie or anything that, that, that happened oh, to yeah. come backstage that would that turn oh, too shit. weird for you? Or? Oh, yeah. Every night, every night of the week, in fact, twice a night, crazy things would happen. In fact, I remember once in Indianapolis, a, Beautiful girl came to the door. It was late at night. I had to get up the next morning for a 6 a.m. Uh, I had to get up at 6 a.m. to catch a 9 o'clock flight. And this mm -hmm. knock on the door, I looked through the people. There's a beautiful girl over there. And I'm saying, okay, I guess I won't sleep tonight. <laughs> Come on in, sweetheart. What's your name? It doesn't matter. Shut up and let's read a book. <laughs> 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 Anyway, to make a long story short, I know you want to get to the dirt. Don't skip the skip this stuff. Yeah, I know. Let's just get. To it. She comes in, and we become fast friends. I don't remember her name. It didn't really matter. And she, uh, after we get through swapping spit, we discuss the very social significance of the panel graphic art form. And then she says, and then I tell her, look, I've got to get up tomorrow morning. It's been sweet. It's been swell. I'll see you next year. Uh, she says, before I go, can I do something for you? I'm going, great, this is going to be a show. So I prop myself up in bed, I'm going, great, it's going to be a show. So she gets up, naked, of course, beautiful girl, I mean, with one of those slave bracelets, bracelets on. She takes her little valise, gets in front of the bed, 
unfolds it, takes out this beautiful Persian carpet, you know, that she rolls up. She <clears> brought <throat> a Persian carpet? Well, there? you know, like one of those mini kind, the kind that you sweep, you know. When oh, you oh okay, like, yeah, all right. One of those little baby ones. And she takes it and gets, opens up a thing, gets little candles and, you know, lights them and stuff. I'm going, great, she's going to do like a little belly dance because she's naked in front of the bed. Not a, she all of a sudden goes into this dark stuff, you are my master, tell me what to do. And I'm going, oh my God. I <laughs> Tell me what to do, oh master. Yeah, yeah, yeah baby, uh, look, uh, I'll see you. I got to get out of here. And uh, she says, tell me what to do, tell me what to do. I go, well, look, just leave. She said, no, no, <laughs> once, once I leave, what, what should I do? I say, go up to 2311, the road, <laughs> the road crew is up there, and uh, become friends with them. The next day, I don't know what happened to her, but the next day the road crew came up and said, hey, man, can I get you a glass of water? Is there a door? <laughs> you know, they you know. So I guess, I guess she became friends with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Now I have, but I have to. I have to ask you if you have this. Well, let's say let's say oh, fifteen hundred. Right. Let's say fifteen. Let's, let's say let's, let's, two, let's say twenty five hundred. All right, let's say twenty five hundred. <laughs> Gene, twenty five. Twenty five. Okay, let's say twenty five hundred. But you have also been with uh, Cher, with Anna Ross, um, Shannon Tweed. I mean, this is these. When you when you look at this, look at me trying to explain this. <laughs> when um, let's say Diana Ross wants to become involved with Gene Simmons, there's a lot of other baggage. I mean, you, they kind of have to know that this is the kind of guy you are, that you're not I think, a settle down kind of guy. Is I that think right? the, uh, and, you know, just to get serious for a second, I think what you've got to do with anybody, whether they're your friends, your enemies, your lover, is to be upfront about anything. And I think before you start a relationship, you've got to sit down and say, look, this is who I am. And the first thing I do is say, look, this is my closet. Here's what's going on, here's who I am, here's what I've done. So that later on you can't say, hey, you know, you, you double-crossed me, you said something that wasn't so. I think you owe anybody honesty. Mm -hmm. And then if they can accept that, you're in! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want you to stay here because we're going to bring uh, one of your partners up, Paul Stanley, also from KISS, after this commercial. So please stay with us, folks. <laughs> It was, uh, it was about 16 years ago that uh, Gene and our next guest got together and formed the rock group KISS. Um, he's been a sex object himself for 15 years and has a reputation as being one of the baddest boys in uh, rock and roll. Here's a, here's a look. What do you think parents think about you? Do I care? <laughs> Please welcome from KISS, Paul Stanley. <laughs> I'm excited. Counting backstage has been 4,000 women. What's this? Counting backstage in the dressing room, 4,000 women. No. It's unbelievable. Oh, well, you, you just beat Gene then. What is that? We saw the four women in that, in that deal. What was that we were looking at? That well, clip. it beats working, that's for sure. <laughs> I guess. This, this, this lifestyle, this whole... You know, I think a lot of us live vicariously through you guys in this, uh, this, this road style that you have. Is it, is it really like that, Paul? I mean, is it... As wild out there as, as uh, it's portrayed to be? How do you describe Disneyland? I mean, it's everything it's cracked up to be. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, um, it's a one-way ticket, and the rides just keep coming. How about, how about trashing hotel rooms? Were you guys ever famous for doing that? No, nah, we don't. Gene says, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> no, nah, we don't trash hotel rooms. Mm -hmm. when, we're nah. too busy to do that. You're too busy doing, yeah. doing what? Well, we're usually testing the box springs on the bed. <laughs> uh-huh. Now, are we to believe uh, the press releases that, that come out and uh, uh, all the things that are said about this band? Well, when we write them, we try to make them as <laughs> <authentic> <laughs> as possible. <laughs> are, what, what hazards are... Now, we talked a little bit with, with Gene. What hazards are there about, about being in your position? Gee, I don't know. Nothing? Nothing about it? Uh... Cramps from smiling? I don't, I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, it's been, it's been great, you know, mm -hmm. either you get Charlie Horse from uh, running after women or Charlie Horse from having them chase you. Mm -hmm. But it's, 
it's pretty good. Yeah, which happens. Now, that's that's such a reversal. In the real world, uh, we men have to chase the women. That's right. Yeah, but it's not that way if you're a rock and roll star, that's is right. it? That's right. You betcha. Nope. They, come, they come after you. It's too bad uh, there are so many people in our line of work, and we really do righteous work, don't we? Uh, you know, who downplay and badmouth rock and roll. It's really the best thing. I mean, I wish this lifestyle on anybody. It's the best thing to, to do what you do and... Uh, you know, have beautiful women want you and get paid for it too. It's, it's the best. It's really great. I mean, when you have, you know, these fickle artists and people who want to be left alone and talk about the misery of being famous, I think we should do them a favor and stop buying their records yeah, and make them happy. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they would. <laughs> they wouldn't be famous. Yeah, what's good? What happened? Uh, what happened when uh, when Kiss started taking the makeup off and uh, and when? natural now did, did fans rebel or or now they thought oh oh that's what paul looks like well gene tell us about that i think uh unless you want to be a band that stands still i think you've got to move on and sometimes you have to take a step one step backwards to take two steps forward you know you can only pull the same rabbit out of the same hat for so many years and uh we decided instead of playing it safe that we'd go forward. You know, what's interesting is the same people who said, uh, hey, you're gonna wear makeup? You're gonna wear makeup in a group? Are you out of your minds? Were the same people who said, you're gonna take the makeup off? Yeah, you the out people, of your mind? You know, you can't. <laughs> when funny. we first got a record deal, there were people who were saying, you know, it's a great record, but why don't you just look like a bunch of human beings, which was very difficult for us to do in the first place. <laughs> but um, <laughs> then when we decided to take it off, they were going, no, you can't take it off because it'll be the end of the band. But it was really, I mean, you, you get a certain kind of vindication because we've continued since we took the makeup off and it's monkey business as usual. I mean, yeah, everything's, right. it's been great. Yeah, which I think is the appeal of KISS. It's just really a lot of fun to well, see you guys work. I think the whole idea and what we do is that um, we don't really care what anybody says. We follow our own gut instincts. And if you're with us, great. And if you're not... Too bad. Too bad. Yeah. There's yeah. always, I mean, even Christmas has got its Scrooges, so. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we have a deal here. It's called The Decline of Western Civilization, Part Two, The Metal Years. And that's something, a movie that you guys are, or something, we have a clip from this. Yeah, we were just interviewed for it about six months ago. We had no idea what the movie was going to be, but a friend of ours, Penelope Spheres, who's the director, ah. you're welcome for mentioning your name, yeah. TV, <laughs> uh, you know, asked us. S-P-H-E-E-R-I-S. That's right. Asked us to do the interview, and uh, we were more than glad to, because we knew that some of the element in the, mo in the movie, the documentary, was going to be negative. Hey, look, we're fine. We haven't died. We're here. There's you know, nothing. Yeah, and after on. 70 million records, you have imagined, uh, saved a penny or two, and it doesn't yeah, we're the hell with it. We're not hurting. All right, well, let's take, a, let's take a look at the clip. Girls, all sizes, all shapes. Big, small, short, tall, nice. Jesus Christ, when we toured with Kiss, they were like like monsters, man. Lines up of chicks outside their rooms every night, you know. What they, what's the matter with me? I'm trying to pull the stragglers, you know. Do you often see girls take off their shirts at your concerts? Yeah. It's a it's our form of salute. They go, hello, and they go, hello. This girl with really long hair sits in the sits on the bar stool by the side of us, and we don't know, and suddenly she goes bang and falls on the floor. So she says, I'll only stay a while. All right, so we become fast friends, we swap spit. He gets her by the, the legs, and I get her by the shoulders. And I got her by the shoulders, and I, I, I get so far up with her, and she starts wobbling and screaming. Oh, what's the matter with her? So I don't know how to get rid of this girl. She says, what do you want of me? And I suddenly realized I had my foot on her head. I said, go up to the 23rd floor where the uh, road crew is and take care of them. And she's like doing an epileptic fit. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what happened, but the next day the road crew was very friendly. Have you ever said to yourself, I could fall in love with this groupie? <laughs> <laughs> have I ever Have, have I you ever, ever said that? to yourself, I could fall in love with this groupie, yeah? Probably not, because I'd have to think that uh, somebody in every other band had also. Paul Stanley said one time that if you're going to make it be successful, you got to get rid of your women. This is the way you want to live, then you can live like this. And we can safely say that the, since this is a documentary film that you actually do live like this. As often as I can. All right, we're gonna take a break. Please, you guys, you guys stay right here. And uh, we'll be back with more of The Late Show and Dr. Joyce Brothers after this. Stay with us. Tomorrow. All right, we are back. Uh, you know, we have on the show tonight Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Ron Luciano, three legendary lovers. 
<laughs> and we thought it'd be fun it, to have uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers come out here and give us a sex test and see, uh, see just if your sex life really sizzles. So here she is, Dr. Joyce Brothers. attitude that these men have about fame. I think yeah. it's so terrible when people hire press agents and they try so hard to be famous and then they go around saying, I can't stand it. Uh, you know, if a bus driver... It's healthy, driver, isn't it? It's wonderful. If a bus driver doesn't want to tell people where the bus is going, even though it says on the front, or tell people to move to the back of the bus so mm -hmm. there's more room, then there's no business being a bus driver. And people who aren't interested in fame have no business trying to go well, after it. Well, I think it. you're right. I think you're right. And I'm, I'm glad you're here because... Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, here's what we have here. We're little clipboards, and uh, we'll pass that down. That goes to Ron. Here's one for, uh, well, that's Paul. Here's Gene. We got, see, we even had labels oh, on them. Oh, my goodness. Got labels on yeah, them. Really fancy. Oh, and this one, that's, that's ours. All right, so now you're okay. going to give us a, a little a test to, to find see. find out if your sex life sizzles, and people in the audience can take it, too. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. If given you, a choice, I'd Now, this rather... isn't, gonna, I don't want, this isn't weighted. You haven't been with either one of these guys, have you? No. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I, but. I could not get into their dressing room. The women backstage are not to be believed. And your dressing room's worse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right, what's question the first one. question here? If given a choice, I'd rather have A, a check for $50,000, B, a weekend with Kathleen Turner, or C, a weekend with the Brady girls, Marsha, Jan, and Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, can we get like 25 grand in Kathleen? Can we get the, uh... Okay. You're the negotiator. Yeah, all right. So, uh, okay. Do that... you want to tell us? Huh? Do I have to, have to say? Of well, course. I'll say 50 grand. I'll say $50,000. 50000 I'll take the 50000 <laughs> Yeah, fifty thousand. Yeah, I'll, 50, I'll take fifty thousand because you can. With fifty, you can have. You can both have the all Brady of them. Bench and... <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ron. Well, I take fifty thousand because I'm too old. <laughs> oh. All right. You can see we're well, cash you guys hungry. Are just not sizzlers because once okay. you have mo once money is your mistress, sex takes second place. But to... that's a lot of money to be your mistress. Oh yeah, but but, but people who are 50. people whose sex life sizzle really go after the gold. They go for the sex. They are not distracted by money. All right, well, we'll, we'll do better on the sex next one. We'll do better. Okay, fine, better on the sex. Okay. Two. Which sentence describes you? A. When I travel, I prefer to go to countries I know, places where the sights are familiar. B. I like to go to new and exotic places where I can explore. And C. When I travel, I always bring my imaginary friend Billy. <laughs> or D, the road crew of Kiss. Um, okay, I new. That's what I put down. New. I, I like new and exciting things. C. I've always got Billy with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gene. B. B. Exotic uh, things and all sorts of nice stuff. Ah, okay. Right. Old right. stick in the mud wants to go to the same old place with the same old people. <laughs> With, well, <laughs> with your 50 grand. <laughs> yeah. The sexiest of all men really like exotic and new places. They like to explore. With the adventurous spirit comes also adventure and sex as well. Okay. That's not what and Billy says. For two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got, all right, let's uh, question, question four, three, three now. If I were having sex and someone were crude enough to place a tape recorder under my bed, a, there'd be lots of racket and little conversation. B, you heard moans, groans, and a lot of pillow talk. Or C, you'd hear pips without Gladys Knight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I guess, I, I guess, uh... Oh. Well, I've never been with Gladys, so I will say, I, I think lots of racket. Lots of yeah, pillow, lots of... Pillow talk and... and uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, I like yeah. to chatter. <laughs> well, lots of racket is A, is it A? Well, yeah. it's, uh, well, the little conversation, but you say you'd have some, some pillow talk. Uh, oh, sure. So oh, you'd be oh, lots, B. maybe. You'd yeah. be, oh. yeah. What would you say? I'd say B, but mm -hmm. the moans and groans are always my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'd say I'd say B. I like pillow talk. I like uh, talking and making noises and stuff. Woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> I Ma? <laughs> oh. Oh, so you're going to go with B? Yeah, I'm Oh, a there you go. There's uh, that, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that's what you want. That's what you want is a big moaning Italian umpire with you. Yeah. Okay. Interesting, a, a study that I did, not in relationship to this at all, found that women generally are, are, are turned off by very salty language. They're pillow talk that they like or love talk rather than, uh, than dirty words. That dirty words seem to be a turn off for most women. You have very beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Billy tells me that too. <laughs> okay, here we go. Four. Let's see how we're doing here. All right. Uh, wait, four? Yeah, are we on question four? Yes. So it's something about yes. what, keeping in shape yeah. or something? Yeah. Paul got me out of just... He flusters. All, all flustered. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he flusters a lot of women. You're not the first. Paul, what do you do to keep in shape? A, weight training. B, jogging aerobics. C, nothing I look like this naturally. <laughs> <laughs> um, weight training for me. Weight training yeah. for you. Aerobics. Aerobics. Um... I guess a combination of all three. I guess you can't do all three because do. sometimes I don't do anything, sometimes I weight train, sometimes I just eat cookies, so. <laughs> well, with 3,000 3, women, they say that uh, the all studies right, B, show... All right, all right, the, <laughs> the studies show that uh, any sex act uses up 150 to 200 calories, so That's perhaps right. you do combine all three. I'm in good 150 shape. calories? To 200, depending, to 200. On, the depending, to, depending on, the... on the nature of the act. Oh. <laughs> depending on the nature of, of the act. Well, yeah. Well, like, what's the best? What's the... What would be the... <laughs> Let's get to Ron. Get to Ron. All right, a C. 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 You do nothing. You look like that now? I do. That's it. Okay. I burn up. <laughs> okay. I burn between 5 and 12 calories. 5 and 12 calories. Okay, how are we doing, Dr. Joyce? You, you must use that up just asking. No, moaning. <laughs> oh. Five. Which choice describes your feelings about sexual fantasies? A. I would never tell my sexual fantasies. They'd scare women to death. B. I often discuss my sexual fantasies with women and hope they'll want to make them come true. Or C. My fantasies always begin with Ricardo Montalban coming out to greet the plane. <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I usually I just take an ad out. <laughs> I, no, I, you know, I would say, uh, A, I, I would be kind of secretive about it. Never tell. See, yeah, never well, tell. except, except uh, with my wife. Yeah, I would tell yeah, her. But you would tell your wife your fantasies. In a minute. In a minute. Yeah. Okay. No, Fine. yeah. Yeah, and what about you? B, I think in sex it's real important to be open. And mm -hmm. I think that something's only a fantasy until you turn it into reality. And unless you talk about it, I don't think you're being true to yourself or the other person. Yeah. B, although uh, a lot of fantasies aren't really to be talked about, I think... Sometimes you need fuel for the fire, and if you... Sometimes it's nice to let the imagination propel you to greater heights. <laughs> Ron? I'm an, I wear a rowing coat. I'm an, I expose myself all the time, so it's... Uh, B. So you all, you all yeah. would tell your fantasies, which yeah. is fine, because it does True. add fuel, and, and uh, when you can share like that, it makes life much more exciting. Oh, okay. Well, now, that we, I see we're getting short on time here. We've gone through five questions here. How, uh, how have we done so far? How do we score ourselves here? Well, or will we find that out a little bit later? Let's find it out right after your commercial, or do you have time for one more question? Well, we, we better find out, I guess, after the commercial. Okay. Because I think it's going to take most of us uh, time to tabulate all this. All right. All right? 3,000 women, that takes a lot of figuring. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, the results of this Dr. Brothers test in a moment, and we'll take some uh, questions from the audience if we have time for that when we come back. Stay sure. with us. Dr. Joyce has, has tabulated the results on the sex quiz. Who's the sexiest? Well, Jean and Paul tie, as they really have an enormous amount of sex through enormous. a sizzle. Enormous. Oh. Ron comes in a close second. R Ron? And I'm, I'm dead sorry. last. You're dead last. I think you're going to need a special seminar with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. We'll make sure to get a tape recorder. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Joyce Brothers' eighth book. It's called The Successful Woman, 
Now you can have a career, a husband, a family, and not feel guilty about it. And uh, what what is the book about, basically? Just uh, well, I dealing with I interviewed successful women all over the country, famous ones like Barbara Walters and Jean Kirkpatrick, uh, and Dolly Parton, and uh, you know women who have made great names for themselves because uh -huh. of their success, and also women who are successful within their own family, and, and other people may not have heard uh, of them or from them, but they manage to juggle their uh, everything. successes, everything. Oh. Have a child and a career and are very, very happy. And they shared with me the secrets of their success, and oh, I'm good. passing on to others who want to, uh, not to reinvent the wheel, but to manage to have all of the things in their lives. You can't have it all at one time, but you can have it all at different times if you learn how to do it properly. Well, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you brought that along here. And you know what we'd like to do right now? I would like to go into the audience and have the audience ask some questions of these three guys and yourself. Sure. Would you mind? Sure. All right. Let, uh, yeah, kind of like that. Let me go up here. All right. Who has a who has a question for uh, for anybody there? Oh, you have a question. Here. Okay. What is your name? Joanne. All right, Joanne. Who is it for? I'd like to ask both Jean and Paul, given the AIDS crisis right now, if you are thinking about changing your approach to women and yeah. to sexuality. I think we're taking more of the uh, Three Stooges approach, which it's don't try this at home. You know, it's, <laughs> kids don't try this. Okay. I, think, I mean, I think everybody's got to be realistic. When it rains, you wear a raincoat and take it from there. Be careful. All right. Julie. What is your question? Um, this is for Jean and Paul, and I wanted to ask them, I won this Kiss Gold card off a radio station to get me backstage, and when I went to the concert, they wouldn't let us back, and I wanted uh, to know... All right, would you come backstage? You're coming we'll, backstage after this show. Yeah, we'll fix it. Are you, are you sure you want to go backstage with these guys? Yes, I want to go backstage with them. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, well... Uh, we promise, we'll see you backstage. Yeah, all right. Who else has a question? Oh, you, you right here. How about you, yeah. sir? This is for uh, Gene and Paul. For, with 21 albums out, how do you, and so many songs, how do you go about choosing the set list for the concerts? That's a good question. Because yeah. a, a lot of the songs, like off of The Elder and Dynasty, aren't usually done, and those yeah. are, fans love it. You know, those the are great. The truth is songs. that uh, what we do, almost all of what we do, has very much to do with what the fans want. We read fan letters, we talk to you guys, obviously you ladies. Uh, and we find out what you want, and the show is really much more of a public service kind of show. It really show. changes. We try to, you know, if we get to speak to people and they tell us what we want, you know, what they want to hear, usually we'll change the show. I mean, it's for you. All right, let's, we have one more. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, for Ron Luciano. Uh, I'm from Michigan, and do you ever have any, did you ever have any problems with Sparky Anderson from the Detroit Tigers? Uh, yeah, I was, when he first came over from Cincinnati, I was the first one to throw him out. You know, I just, <laughs> well, he, he talked Cincinnati, if you can talk Cincinnati. I don't know. He said something about the National League. I threw him out. Yeah, I had trouble with everybody, except Ross. Yeah, well, that's because that's we get along, don't we? Sure, and my two new friends here. Your I'm following friends. them around for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'll tell you what. All right, we are, uh, we're going to take a short break. Well, we're going to come back, so uh, please stick around, folks. Yes, I, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Thank you for the little uh, sex test you gave us. Paul Stanley and uh, and Gene. Gene, tell us. Yeah, Gene, you've got a uh, what? There's something happening with Kiss now. You're rehearsing something. I know. Yeah, right to Europe. Right, right after this show, we're rehearsing in New York City, and we're flying over to Europe to do the uh, outdoor stadiums. They're the Monsters of Rock, the ah. European version. Good. And uh, we'll see you next year. We got to do a. A Christmas LP, and here's I'll Ron. See you yeah, tonight. and Ron Luciano. Thank you, Ron. All right, tomorrow night, we have a special guest, a man who tells you you can get rich in real estate. Maybe he's a fraud. We don't know. We'll see you.